Jones. Let me get some more volume in that headphones to beat. Ah. Jones. Copacetic, I elevated my focus ethic. Yeah. Chosen records were heard them cause they condone the message. Yeah. Camouflage my emotions, I control my aggressions. Yeah. Learning lessons in oceans where the current's really a blessing. Yeah. Hip hop has been in me since 19, since I was really 1970s, so, you know, when I was born and stuff, and then I, and uh, so, and there's just been in my bloodline, you know, and it's just something I can't get rid of, and I, and I have to accept that I was the first, <laughs> yeah. and I was a hard artist, and I was this and that, and, you know, and then I have to live up to that and still maintain my humanity, you know, that's what I mean. So. Linking up for Black Friday sales in these black jackets. Slaughter and sheep is deep when you exit the circuit. Couldn't wake up from the matrix, you niggas. I can't be tired. I'm crazy on my feet. Hey, I'm riding my way till my soul is excited. On my knees and I'm crazy on my feet. Lord have mercy. I set my goals to be higher and higher. On my knees and I'm crazy on my feet. Yeah. Well, uh, first, we just want to take a second to um, appreciate this man right here. Um, mm -hmm. He's a legend here from our city, our state, um, goes back a long way. We're gonna let him actually get to explaining some of that. But uh, for the people that don't know who you are, can you introduce yourself to the world? Yes, my name is Mark Womack, AKA King Wojak, AKA Wojak, uh, from Criminal Nation, first hip hop group out of Tacoma, Washington. Um, to have a real record deal, to have some uh, national notoriety and to go overseas as well with it. Um, and I've been proud to be part of that idea ever since the early 80s. Okay. Started the group in 90s though, but I mean, just saying I started my hip hop journey in the early 80s. The 80s, okay. That's what's up. Where were you born? I was born in Monterey, California, Fort Ord military base. Uh, my grandfather was in the military. Uh, we had my, He had a family of nine, uh, nine, uh, three, six girls and three boys. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother, who we were stationed up here, he's stationed up here in Fort Lewis. Uh, my mom got pregnant by a Tacoma man named James Womack and they weren't getting along, so she went to have the baby at, at Fort Ord Military Base where, my, where her father was. Okay. And, um, and I was born there, I spent two or three months down there and then they shipped me back home. To uh, Tacoma, and so I was raised here, born in Monterey, raised here, never really been to Monterey in my okay, life. You okay, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I'm a Tacoma guy, yeah, yeah. you know, to the fullest. But California, you know, yeah. bloodline. Okay. So it's safe to say you came up then, and, and just Tacoma, or was it anywhere else? Just Tacoma? grew up in Tacoma, you know, um, the East Side, Hilltop, Tacoma, and okay. it's all one. So, yeah. You know what I mean? I grew up here. Uh, in your household as a kid, what kind of music was you guys hearing? Well, my dad had, you know, like most uh, black households, they had the record player, you know, the stereo system, and uh, that was his pride and joy, right. you know. So, you know, we bumped the stereo, listened to K-Fox radio, and, uh, you know, listened to all the radio stations that were fortunate enough to be playing a little bit of R&B, jazz, hip-hop, whatever was going on back then. Um, but my father had a list of records of Bob Marley, uh, Marvin Gaye, um, uh, Commodores, Gap Band. Right. You know, I grew up in it. You know, when I got into his record collection and yeah. started just playing his records and stuff, you know, I, I got reprimanded a few times. You know, <laughs> you know scratching records and, and messing with his, don't be his shit. shit. Yeah. yeah, don't touch his shit. You know what I mean? Right. And that was serious back then. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like grabbing somebody's cell phone today. You don't touch the stereo. So, um, you know, I, I played the records diligently and just learned and listened to the music. And my, some of my favorites is Bob Marley. You know what I mean? Yeah. I grew up off a lot of Bob Marley. All my family was listening to them, him back then. And uh, when I grew up, then the words started to resonate as I got older. So yeah. I didn't know what I was listening to. I just listened to music. So right. then were this, you know, most of the artists that I kind of got an early start of music off of. Okay. So the classic yeah. 70s, yeah. you know, yeah. R&B, Motown yeah. type shit, okay. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever, was there a time that you were maybe leaning more towards that, like playing an instrument or singing or something maybe rather than rapping? Um, I got a drum set at five. Okay. Okay. So my first bit major thing, I don't know why they would buy me a drum set. I didn't know how to play the drums, mm -hmm. but I got a drum set at five and uh, sat in my little room over there on the north end of Tacoma.
Okay. Because, uh, you know, we moved all over. You know, my right. mom and dad was a hard-working, middle-class family. Both my mom worked at Kloppensteins in the Bond, and my dad worked down okay. on the Tide Flats and stuff. Shout so. out to the Bond Marche. Rest in peace. Shout <laughs> out. You know, and I was a Bond Marche model uh, in the early... Uh, 80s, oh, you know, okay. like 86, 86. Okay. I was a Marche. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I did that, but uh, yeah, we um, uh, man, uh, my dad and mom had a great understanding of what we were doing, and just so they gave me the music and let me get into it, or let me sit down and play. And I learned drums from there on, and I played drums in the church. Okay. Uh, you know, and I wasn't the best, but I, you know, I knew the, I knew I'd hold the beat. I could keep the beat. You know what I mean? So he was on to something. Let me get some skills. So I get, I got into that, and um, from there, I just, um, you know, I fell off and went into sports, okay. boxing. Okay. Uh, you know, when my dad was a fighter to okay. also too, so he fought in the So You Think You Tough fights. This is when anybody in the city thought you was tough. Right. You sign up and come on down to okay. the dome and put your gloves on and sign your oh, waiver right? oh, and oh, get shit. your ass whooped <laughs> or whoop some ass. Okay. 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 It's so either or. Some green for some money involved. Okay. 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 So my dad, he did that for like four or five years in a row and he was, he became champion like um, oh, uh, uh, out of third fight he became champion and then they took a fight from him and I remember I couldn't go yeah. so it was kind of etched in my mind that I wanted to go and see my dad whoop some ass fight and I couldn't because <laughs> right. my mom said I was too young right. so therefore I got into the boys club boxing program okay. yeah. and where he trained at and and um, I boxed for seven and a half years what boys club was it? Al Davies oh Al Davies okay. yeah, shout out Hilltop Al yeah, Davies yeah, yeah. it was actually the Tacoma the original boys club downtown Tacoma yeah um, the little big old white building, and then uh, they moved it up to Al Davies. But that's when I started down there at the old boys club. Mm -hmm. So with all the Tom Mustins, the Andy Whites, the yeah. uh, uh, you know all the major players that is in the boxing game. So uh, that just I, I just locked onto that. You know what I mean? I was a fighter. Right. You know what I mean, it was in my blood. I loved to fight. I yeah. beat up a couple cats yeah. on the regular. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Threw it around the school. So, sorry, guys. Because <laughs> you know I mean? if you do remember me, I did. <laughs> Reckless with these hands, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and no guns. Yeah, yeah. It was no guns. <laughs> right, right, right. So it was like what? It was over with. It's done. Right, so right. that's how we spoke back then. But okay. uh, shout out to the realist that yeah. spoke with their hands and yeah. still do. Okay. We need to bring that back, man. Yeah. Bring that back. Put the gloves on. It's nothing. You want to talk all that talk? Put the gloves on. Stand <laughs> in the front of the crowd, in front of the people. Mm -hmm. Get all your buddies together and put your dukes up. Right, right. Yeah. And then if your dukes get beat, defeated, then shut up. Then they, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Shut the hell up and get on about your business. And learn how to fight. Yeah. Right. So, well, that's you know, yeah. That's just uh, yeah, we can go all day. Gym <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right there. Right on. Uh, so when did you when did you know that you wanted to uh, start rapping? Listening to K Fox, mm -hmm. and um, they were playing. K Fox used to come on about five o'clock, then it would it fade out about seven, and it you know so all we got to do was listen to Nasty Ness, <clears throat> and he played all the hit and local. Um, no, no, there was no local. He'd play all the. Uh, New York hip hop, and that's all we had to learn from was right, New York right. hip hop. So mm -hmm. he play all them, and then all of a sudden, Sir Mix a Lot pops in the scene around um, 86, 87, 88, okay. and they were playing him, and we were just, you know, totally in, in fact. So this, this is pre Posse on Broadway? Pre Posse on Broadway. Right. We, I'm talking about Buttermilk Biscuits, a bunch of. You know, st songs we didn't think you, you know, yeah. who is this dude? He's a country rapper. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's country rap. I was like, what the So that's the it? first time you had ever heard of him was, yeah. was, was on but, the radio? But he was from our city. He was from Seattle. Seattle yeah. Right. So from for us, it was like, damn, the nigga's close. Yeah, yeah. And he's doing that? Right. So we just kind of like, oh, shit, we, you know. Me, uh, we used to be, I used to be a DJ. I started off DJing in, in the early, uh, 80, I say 83, 84, I learned how to, Put my own sound system together, two turntables, watching TV, mm -hmm. watching all the uh, Jam Master J, okay. uh, Jazzy Jeff, Freshman, watching all these guys come out, uh, Grandmaster Flash. They uh, had the two turntables, so I built that thing at okay. school when they had shop class. Okay. Now, this is when they had shop class. Right, right, right. They don't even have shop class. <laughs> no, 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 I can teach you how to do nothing these days. Yeah. Okay, all they want you to do is go to school, listen to the teacher, and socialize with a bunch of kids who don't know nothing either. Right. So it's just kind of, it's up, you know. 
I just miss the old days. You know, right, I mean? right. when we talking about the old days, yeah. we talking about the golden days, the seventies, uh, the eighties, the nineties, before all the real crack cocaine and the gangs got involved right, right. and the, the buffoonery. So, right, right, right. Um, yeah, it was a good time. I started off DJing. I DJed a couple house parties. Um, shout out to Lynetta Pugh who hired me for my first uh, house party. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynetta Cunningham now, okay. and um, uh, and I DJed Al Davies Boys Clubs, and then I had we put our crew together, Def City Rockers. Okay. We had a little okay. crew, and then this is when we was wearing jackets, and okay. you know we had a mind, we had a mind game, mind right. play. So we went out and uh, had a car wash, raised money from a car wash, mm -hmm. went out and bought nine jackets. Said. It said Def City Rockers on the back. Now, of do you have the jacket now? No. Uh, no. Yeah. I don't have no hip hop history. No. I can't oh, keep shit. my own shit because niggas steal my shit from me. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah, bring that jacket out. Yeah, man, there's there's a few jackets we did. So back then, and this is what I'm. Uh, I think cats need to do. If you want to brand yourself, yeah. Put your name on the back of your jacket and go everywhere you go. And right, right. Oh, okay, oh, so and so that's so and people right. see. That's the best free advertisement right, right. branding you can do. <laughs> so we had Def City Rockers on the back of our jacket with the staff. Statue of Liberty and a mic in her hand. Oh. We had that logo design. That's okay. a classic That's one. So we had silver. It was like it was like platinum satin, something like one of these uh, linens. Oh. Silver ja a satin jacket with the white and blue. It was blue satin jacket with the white and, uh, number letters on the back. And man, yeah. we had nine women. When we got together, right, right. it was like oh, it looked up, right. Death City Rockers. Was it was it like a patch? No, it was it was it was, like, uh, was silk screen on, silk screen. Oh, yeah, okay, silk okay, screen okay, on. okay. Uh, man, it was like there they go. So we went to all the football games everywhere, you know, and we had a couple MCs and okay. and uh, b boys and rap and you know break dancing was in there. Right, right, right. So you know, uh, thanks to uh, shout out to High Performance who okay. who uh, miraculously defeated the New York City Breakers, who were the number one New sure. York uh, breaking crew in the in the world. Yeah. Uh, so wow. uh, somehow. Ooh, shout out to the promoter who put that on. We don't even know who he did that this, yeah. to this day. Where was I that at? Where was the it was at the one? Tacoma Dome. Oh, it was? As soon okay. as the Tacoma Dome got built, they had the first real, that was the first real black event at Tacoma Dome. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the break, the high performance, high performance, man, yeah. that's deep. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. thought about that. High performance defeated the New York City Breakers at the Tacoma Dome Convention Center, uh, early 80s. Damn. And uh, it was, there was at least, Three or four thousand people in the building. You know yeah, what I mean? packed house. It was right. good. And so we're, we're gonna have to ask everybody to do some some Google research if you don't know who the New York City Breakers are. <laughs> These are the same motherfuckers that was going up against like uh, Rocksteady Crew back mm -hmm. then. So this is like big shit. There was guys on TV. They, they were in Breaking. They were yeah. you know I mean they were on all the movies that we were watching and emulating. But right. for uh, but Mad Dog, Maurice Owens. Uh, Man, these guys came out and put on a great show back and forth. And of course, you know, it, it, in sportsmanship, why not let the hometown win? You know right, what I mean? Right, right. But I think we did win. You know okay, what I mean? And for in our eyes, we we won. So yeah. we were out there doing that break okay. dancing. Right. I was break dancing. Okay. I tried to shoot, but yeah. I was a big kid. Right. You know what I mean? So when I was in the basement and we had our crew together, we did a couple routines and battles and and stuff like that. And you know, we we're mediocre, not like them, but right. mediocre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I did a head spin a couple times, <laughs> and, 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 and I was like, okay, I'm getting, I got my head, got my cardboard. Yeah. Went down into the head spin, ah, 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 popped my neck. Boy, oh, I stopped. Shit. <laughs> I stopped and I was like, oh shit, what was that? <laughs> what was that, my yeah. dude? I almost broke my neck. Man. I, was like, <laughs> I almost broke my neck, head spin, and I was like, man, that's it for me. I'm done with breaking. Done with breaking. Let me figure out what else I can do for hip hop, you know okay. what I mean? So, okay. uh, I DJ, and then we're going into this major battle that took place downtown Tacoma. Uh, when we used to have the festivals, you know, and when we had uh, the block party, and then yeah. you know, te the town was doing something. I don't know, you know people they just stopped doing that, you know. So uh, we had block parties and fairs and that, and rides and stuff, and it was a good time. But the two crews met up. Okay. High performance, Def City Rockers. Okay. Okay. Bumped heads in the middle, and this is when battling was famous right, in right. the town. So you know, it was almost like gang fighting. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Oh shit. Everybody around came and gathered around. We must have had about 150 people standing around us. Right, right, right. In a tight circle. I had two MCs with me. I wasn't even a rapper then. Okay. I was just admiring the, you know, the right. fact that my guys could rap. And um, they brought out their um, secret weapon, which was a female. And her name was Goldie, Marcia 
Marcia, uh, Marcia Gilbert, okay. but her name was Goldie, uh -huh. and Goldie was a little light-skinned girl by her, looked like yeah. her, you know what I mean, with the same hair, you know what I mean, the same making model of her, uh -huh. and uh, she uh, she came out and had rhymes, she came through Canada. in battle, <laughs> and everybody was, oh, and we were just like, ooh, shit, shit. <laughs> we're getting murdered right, right there, right, right. so uh, after that, I, I, I went home and uh, took three, Three days it took me to write my first battle rap okay. against them. I was so mad. You want to get back at them? I, that's how I took my pain, my anger out. I just because we couldn't fight. We was yeah. like, "Fuck!" You know, I'm about to go right. So I practiced and I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. And I finally came up with my first rap. Okay, okay. And I know you got questions, but when my niggas asked me to spit that first rap, uh -huh. and they was like, "Ah, oh, nigga, you don't rap." Uh -huh. uh, it was playing me to the curb, and right, right. oh, nigga, stick to DJing and all this. Okay. I was like, "Okay, well, let me let me do my <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay. Let me do my thing real quick." It was two dudes, my two of them, uh, the main uh, two main rappers that was with me, and I and I busted my rap, and they heard that, and they was like, "Oh, we shit. got it." <laughs> got it. That was tight. Yeah. That was tight. Oh, we got to use that. You might have to do that against yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't wait to do it. And when I did it, we murdered. You know what yeah. I mean? And I became MC Death, the rapper. Okay. okay. MC that Death. was 1986. Okay. So we was going to ask about that too, the MC Death versus the Woe Jack. Yeah, thing. that was my first name, MC Death. Uh, I just couldn't think of it. Icy Rock, no. I used to call myself DJ Icy Rock. Okay. Okay. Corny. <laughs> DJ Ice here, I got it on my jacket and shit. Yeah, yeah. Feeling myself, but uh, no, then I, but as an MC, I was like MC Def, because I thought I was Def. Def mm -hmm. was the word, slang right. word mm -hmm. for dope, you know right, what I mean? Right, so, right. Uh, yeah, I went to that, and I, I carried that name on into the rap game of when I, I battled some cats at a, I did a couple contests. I battled guys that up in Federal Way at the uh, old, some old clubs, I can't remember. Um, but Ice T was there, mm -hmm. and that was the first time Ice T gave me some kudos. Like, man, you got a dope style, you know what I mean? You're gonna, you gonna go somewhere. Yeah. And then from there, it's a mix a lot. Okay. I did a show in front of him, and he gave me the same kudos. Like, man, your voice is incredible. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You gotta do something with this. Yeah. And I just I braced on, and I found a DJ, DJ Eugenius, little light skinned cute boy. You know what I mean? Green eyes, curly hair, Puerto mm -hmm. Rican look alike. Mm -hmm. Love women, women love him. Yeah. So we had a little thing going. Right, right. I had a cool, fresh Jerry curl. <laughs> my shit was wet yeah. on my shoulders and leg. I was like, yeah. yeah, you know, and it was wet. You know what I mean? I got raped on all the time because sometimes I had dandruff in my shit because my skin would, you know, you had oh, yeah. the Jerry curls, your skin would burn. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I got raped on stuff, but that that also um, gave me some of the wittiest mindsets of yeah. talking about. On the spot jokes, ranking, mm -hmm. ranking, right, right, right. on the bus. As soon as I knew it, when I had to wait for school, yeah. and that 19th Street bus come uh -huh. for to go to Foss, yeah. and that was only like five blocks away. I could have walked, but I was I got on that bus. The whole back of the bus, niggas, right. <laughs> sisters, <laughs> niggas. Everybody got jokes. Here, whoa, oh, here come cornflake. Oh, here come cornflake. I was like, I hated that joke because I had flakes the size of cornflakes in my right, shit. Right, and I right. had to pick them out and you know comb my hair to make sure. But if I combed it, my curl would get fucked up. Right, right. So man, they called me cornflake and I whipped them niggas' ass in. <laughs> just yeah. rank, rank, rank. I had jokes for days, man. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a, that, that was a, man, I, we're just in times right now. We're just reminiscing, and, right, right. and I do need this reminiscence because, you know, in, in today's time right now, we're producing nightclubs and doing things, and, and there's ups and downs to it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I just came out of a deep funk, okay. you know what I mean? Just, you, you, you do something for the town, you put a lot of effort into it, right. and then you got to relax and just uh, right. breathe for a minute. So this is helping me. Right. Break out of that right now. So thank you, fellas. Yeah. I appreciate Good it. Out, Cheers man. to you. So, Def City uh, was that like a reference to Tacoma as yeah. Def City? Yeah, we had a Def. We just thought we had a Def City, a dope city, you know, because what we were what we were doing then uh, before the gangs approached, we were into unity. We had a community. You know what I mean? Apache Playboys. Was another crew that had jackets. Okay. Casanova crew okay. was another crew that had purple jackets. They was lady killers, you know. Mm -hmm. Ladies, uh, they had all the ladies, and they threw parties too. Yeah. And we come to their parties, and we never fought with these dudes. It was right. all love, right. all cool. The only time that we had beef is when outsiders came in, okay. the vice lords okay. from mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. They were different. Right. 
the first day of school different. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, who is this dude? Oh, okay. he's, he started a fight on the first day of school in class to let everybody know he was different. Mm -hmm. And from there on, I knew that these niggas was from somewhere else. And uh, I ran into him again at the boys club. And, you know, I'm going to boxing practice, but we seeing these diff two of them. There was two of them, but uh, that's why I, I seen them get... I seen him get a hilltop ass whooping by the Apache Boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about bats and sticks and sent them niggas home. You know, okay. and so that gang, that was my first thing of gangs okay. in Tacoma. Right. Then the Crips came. Okay. Then it just went on from there. From about '86, um, '80, I think '87, Crippin started. '88, we watched. Uh, uh, colors. Colors, yeah. That was the, uh, that, you know, now, now we never understand how TV and hit, Hollywood and history plays a part in the, the, psyche, re, the, right? the, the psyche and the construction of human, the, what they do. So that, that when we seen colors and back in the day, we were just, just dabbling in the fighting and stuff, but we didn't have no structure. Colors gave everybody structure. Mm -hmm. okay. What's up, cuz? Okay. What's up, blood? Pow, okay. right off the spot, be shot the dude. That was the first opening scene. Right, it was right. like, right, right, right. We sitting in the movie theater with Crips. Right. We wasn't even bloods yet. We just sitting in the movie. We was the DCP, but you still had beef with the Crips because the Crips was just slowly forming and figuring out that it was, if you ain't Crip, you ain't nobody. So it was Crip or everybody else. Mm -hmm. So when we got outside that movie theater. I stole a BB gun from several, uh, Fred Myers that morning. <laughs> a little, little third, you know, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. robbing Fred Myers every morning. Right. Uh, hope that's actual limitation. Just <laughs> <laughs> getting Fred Myers yeah. every morning because Fred Myers didn't open the back. Okay. They had only the grocery part open. Okay. So niggas slipping with their backpack, slide to the back. There ain't nobody right. back there getting shoes and everything. <laughs> Just you know, and uh, yeah, I stole the BB gun. I took it to school that man that um, that day, and. Uh, I, I knew that movie was coming out that night, and we was all going to see the movie. And so I, you know, I'm still watching TV and yeah. mimicking TV still. So when we got there, and watched that. I got in trouble for pulling that BB gun out on some niggas, mm -hmm. and the police really actually got me and took me home to my dad and reprimanded me. That I was 17. Hey, at least and, they did that though. Back in nowadays, you pull out a BB gun, yeah. you go and you knock go on and the door, yeah. say, "Hey, Mr. Womack, your son's out here and mimicking this." Blah blah blah. We got him. And my dad, he, I seen it in his eyes change. And then right there, he was like, oh, okay, really? Oh, really? Okay, come on in here. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you, officer. Yeah. Turned around and, ah, <laughs> this guy, I'm going this. Like that. But I got the hands, though, so I yeah. knew he was hit hard. <laughs> but he hit me really hard in the chest and just knocked me into the couch. And I was like, right. I knew better. Right, right, right. I didn't really fuck with guns after that, bro. Okay, okay. So, okay. You know, I was... Alright enough. <laughs> right. right enough. Shout out to all the real parents out there. Shout out to you, pops. Because I caught, I caught a couple hands from them. Uh, not cleaning the garage up, not you know, yeah, not yeah. doing something. I was like, man, this thing is he's still boxing. Though. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how I learned. Though. You know what I mean? Some of you kids didn't, you didn't get that lesson. You didn't right, get right, them right. things. So you out here, and the, and that means the world has to kick your ass mm -hmm. because your parents didn't, mm -hmm. and the world will kick your ass for real. So that's what's up. pay attention. There you go. All right. We kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, was there any other local local artists or acts like before you or around the same time you was coming up that you remember? Like specific to Tacoma, like was there anybody? Nah. Uh, or were any of those other crews, I guess you were talking about, the Apache Playboys, they had rappers and stuff? No, nah, they didn't really have rappers because they, that wasn't their thing. They were more like dance crews. Uh, there was an older crew. Then it was a, a crew right up under them, and then our crew was right up under them. So we had age, you know what I mean? We were different. It was like classes. Okay. We all went to Foss, most okay. of us. And um, but they didn't, you know. There was there was there was no other rappers around mm -hmm. until we really took hold of the scene with okay. with the uh, criminal nation thing, and that was like early '89, '90. Right. Now we had a group. We was mashing around. People started seeing us. We had little mixtape rolling around, mm -hmm. and everybody had was getting music from us. And so we started getting some recognition. And then from there, we did a show, and Nasty Ness said, "Come have a meeting with us." Okay. You okay. know, took me up to meet his business partner, Brett. Carlson, mm -hmm. Jewish dude. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, hey, we, it, funny little segue. We was literally just l looking up old videos, and we had caught uh, an interview that Nasty Ness did 
with somebody from California not even that long ago. Mm -hmm. And he goes, why does everybody call me Nasty Nez when it's clearly an S? Nasty and he Nez. said it correctly. So you know. Nasty Nez. <laughs> Nasty Nez. You know he's one of the real I, I've been dealing with him for a long time. Trust me. I got where Listen, there's a movie and a book that's supposed to already have been written. Okay. I, I'm just cautious about it because mm -hmm. it's a lot of names and pointing fingers mm -hmm. and accusation okay. that could ruin people's situations today. Okay. All the way up to the governor that who used to be the governor, which was Governor Lot, okay, who's yeah. now an ambassador for China. Right. You know, but even then, the implications of him getting money from Nasty Mix, who robbed Criminal Nation, mm -hmm. robbed. Mm -hmm. High performance, okay. tried to rob Sir Mix a lot. Mm -hmm. Sir Mix a lot turned around and sued him for two million and got his shit and kicked rocks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but didn't turn around and say, Whoa, Jack, right. who was really close to him, the niggas is doing this over there. Come right. over here, I got you. Right, right. Nah, he let us stay over there and drown on that label. Damn. Everybody, you know what right, I mean? Right, so right. there was a small rift, but you know, niggas feel that. We knew what was going on. He could have told us right. and, and rescued us, but he took his. Show and went to Deaf really America, and you know what I mean. Went and got a deal with them, and um, and didn't want to do no or work with no type of criminal nation artists or no artists from Tacoma. It was like a gang thing back then. Right. We had stigmatism on us right. because right. we were dealing with from Crips and Bloods. Yeah. Mm. It was crazy, you know. And mixed so was Deaf America? Was that a, a, a part of Def Jam? That was part of Def Jam, okay. which that was. Part, I think somehow mix a lot, and this, these people came together and formed that, and okay. you know. And so they put that record out there, and you know, and still though, you, there, there was E Dog, and there was right. uh, Attitude Adjuster, who could have did an album. It was uh, Kiss Sensation. Mm -hmm. You know, they they came out, but they didn't put no love into them. Okay. And so these guys kind of drowned right. right up under a great artist, Sir right. Mix a Lot. You know, right. Right. who could have made them great as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we we had the most popularity. Yeah. You know. Even though Mix a Lot was the most known, right. we had the most popularity in there because we was the hardest. We right. we was that NWA meets Public Enemy yeah, yeah. out here banging and saying all that crazy shit right, and, right. And, and you know doing some things too. Actually, yeah. we had to fight. I, I, I gotta ask this though. Yeah. This is kind of off the cuff since we're talking about oh, yeah. Mix a Lot. Yeah. I know, like whenever you talk about Mix a Lot to people that ain't from the region, mm -hmm. um, they kind of be like, "Oh, that motherfucker's corny." Did y'all? When you first heard him, did you think he was corny a little bit? <coughs> like buttermilk biscuits, that type of thing? I didn't consider Mix corny. Mm -hmm. I didn't consider him corny. I said it's the end of, uh, I just, back then it was music. You know what I mean? Music wasn't corny then. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It was no, we didn't know what the fuck the shit to do. We didn't know, yeah. who was it? How do you do that? You know what I mean? Okay. This is, you know, he was just, so when, uh, it was great for me because I was one of, I, I'm lucky to say this, proud to say this, and shout out to you, Mix one of the first five maybe six to seven under ten mm -hmm. people i say the first five because he just finished the song yeah yeah, yeah. posse on broadway okay i went up to his house solo he was like you know come on up you know i rolled up there me no i think me and my partner we just rolled up there and um we got there sat in his little white studio he had a nice house he had mm -hmm. uh, 500 uh, bins i sat in park of burgundy <laughs> bins out front. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. walked past i was like yeah we had mixes house yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have mixes, man. You know, we so we get over there and um we walk in sit in this all white room and you know he's got his little studio set up against the wall and he was like you know we was talking for a little bit hanging out you know what i mean and you know I kind of sensed that he wanted to, you know, he was he was feeling it, you know, so he was like, man, I just got to finish an answer, what you think? Okay. You know, he wanted my opinion. Right, right, right. I was like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. let me listen. And... Yeah. My posse on Broadway. I said, ooh, yeah. <laughs> And so the song, that, that sound, it was Godzilla. Yeah. And I remember that, I was like, ooh, shit, that's hard. And then that beat came in there. Mm-hmm. Me and Kiss Sensation, a home away from, from home, home, and a black Benz limo, and a cellular phone. Oh my God! I was like, "Yes, Max, <laughs> this is that the shit <laughs> is slapping." Yeah. So I yeah. couldn't hate on that. Why right, would right. he wasn't corny? Yeah, he was I, a I genius. Right, right, right. He's yeah. a genius to this okay. day still. I mean, because some of the shit did baby, but baby got back. Sure. Yeah. That's classic. You can't never forget that right, shit. Right, it comes right. on white people singing that. Yeah, it's a classic. Right. So Mix is. 
He's not corny. Okay. He's out, he's a he was ahead of the time and and still even buttermilk biscuits and that was country rap. Right. And even country rap can sell today. Still he can true, true. still get money off that. So I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm a real nigga. I'm a real artist. I ain't gonna down nobody. Right. You know if. He didn't do the business right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's gonna keep it one hundred. Mm -hmm. He may not want it to do business right, but he right. didn't do it right. But his music, nah, mix okay. is a genius, okay. man. Okay. Shout, Shout out to Salute. Mix. Salute. For sure. Cheers, mix. <laughs> Let me tell you some more, more mix story, dog. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I did a song. <laughs> I did a song on a mixtape with uh, DJ Just Nice, and he had a really hot mixtape that he should have put out, but he fell off because you know the law and shit getting niggas' lives. Right. Um, Shout out to you, Just Nice. Um, but I said a song, I had a song that said, uh, this ain't no mix a lot, and, uh, uh, something about mix a lot impersonators, you know, we're not mix, impersonate mix a lot, something, and so e Dog, his buddy, heard mm -hmm. the song, seen the video, mm -hmm. shot it to Mix, Okay. told Mix I was dissing. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. shit, okay. This okay. is maybe five, maybe five, five years ago, maybe five, six years ago. Oh, okay. 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 And, uh, so Mix emailed, uh, Facebooked me, Facebooked me, and, um. And a little lengthy message. He's like, man, hey, I don't know. I just heard he was dissing me and blah blah blah. And and um, I don't know what's going on. What did I do to you? And I was like, oh, mixed up. You ain't did nothing. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, if you listen to the song, I was just, I was just saying we ain't make, we ain't imitating you. Right. And you know what I mean? We just out here doing our own thing, you know what I mean? So listen to the song mix. I typed it back and listen. You know, I, and then he said, well, that's what's up. I said, just go listen to it. If you don't like. It, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I, I I think we wasn't dissing you. So ever since then, I was like, this nigga still think I'm dissing him, man. I ain't trying to diss him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's still a good friend of mine. I still okay. consider him good peoples, you know. Okay, okay. You know, I salute him all to this day, man. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, the business wasn't. Yeah, done. yeah. Right. Wow. Okay, damn. Shout out to Infused Tequila. Or <laughs> infused. Yeah, yeah. This is the new shit. This ain't the old shit. This is the new shit. On, <laughs> you don't even gotta smoke anymore. You just hit a shot of this, you gonna smoke and drink at the same time. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, it's the future. The future. <laughs> the future. Okay. <laughs> All let me right. take a uh, let me take a smoke right now. You said we could smoke, so I got you this time. <laughs> I got you this time. Man. I beat there him. you go. Yeah. <laughs> When did you sign with? You were signed to Nasty Mix. Yes. Well, when was when was that? Early 1990, I think around September. Okay. It was in September. Like I remember the the, the weather and everything. So uh, we was excited. You know, me and my guy Eugene was like, man, these guys want to sign us. We just been sitting down and talking to them. They just got a hit record with you know po uh, the Posse on Broadway yeah. went gold. Okay. So now the whole record label's buzzing. Mm -hmm. They say you know these motherfuckers is looking like uh, New York Times up in this motherfucker. The way they're moving right. around and mm -hmm. shuffling paper and they had white interns and white people over here. I was like, man, all these white people running this label. You know what I right. mean? Which is another thing that these cats don't know about having a label. It takes about twenty people. Mm -hmm all doing different things right. to run a real record label. Mm -hmm. It ain't that no one person. <laughs> you know, Master P did it, but he hired interns and had people working for him. And when he got his money, he had people working his business. So you cast this, you know, it takes a village to build up, you know, mm -hmm. to build a shit. So um, you got to just, you gotta, man, you guys got to work together. So we, I went to Nasty Mix and we set up in there in that office and signed our contract. Um, now, did y'all you just look at it on your own? No lawyer, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Just was happy to old school style. Just like we. Nigga, <laughs> what <a> lawyer? <laughs> Who? Yeah. yeah. I ain't got that money. Who? Went? Let's go sign this paper, nigga, yeah, and get yeah. this little bit of fifteen hundred dollars or whatever yeah. they was talking about. I think they gave us like, uh, they gave us like five grand. So me and Eugene split two grand, and our manager okay. got you know a little right. bit. You know, we ran with that. We was happy. Right. They was paying for the video. Right. Right. We did our first video. Uh, Black Power Nation, mm -hmm. they paid for that. We was the first rap group to chase some uh, skinhead through the bushes and try to, you know, right. do justice. Right, right. Burn a right, burn a cross, and then dance in front of it. You know, right. I just did a record radio interview with like 12 DJs on Nasty Ness's radio show, so I'm still relevant to this day. Mm -hmm. I just put out a record called Guns and Violence okay. uh, with Nasty Ness, and so we talked about that video and how relevant it really was way before it's time. Right, right, right. Mm. These niggas burning crosses, chasing skinheads, and catching them in Black Power Nation, and right. dressed in black with Criminal Nation jackets and right, shit, right, and right. white people was like, nah. Man. That was a feeling. <laughs> they, they loved it. 
that we were young black artists, mm -hmm. but they did not love the message, right, right. the violence, the yeah. threats, right. the anger. Right, right. The, hey, we know what you're doing, you know. Right, and I was right. just young. I was ignorant. Mm -hmm. I was 19, 20, 21, 22, just smoking, just started smoking weed. Just never did no drugs or nothing like that. But you know, gang banged a little bit. Mm -hmm. Popped off a couple pistols, got in some major fist fights. We ran this gang shit out here with the Crips. The Crips ran the gang shit, we ran under them. Okay. Because we had to combat them. We were, right. man, we were top to town small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we couldn't go anywhere without running into the Crips, nigga. Right. They hated my nigga because he was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> light-skinned dude, my nigga Pookie, you know what I mean? He was light-skinned and, and he looked... I mean, if you've seen, if you know, you look on the Criminal Nation album, he's the ugliest dude on the album, man. That, that ain't Pookie E-Dog's brother, is it? Not Pookie, no, no, okay, no. Okay. It's light-skinned Pookie, uh, Clifton Jones, you know. Um, man, just, he, he's, a, he's a funny individual. I never <laughs> wanted him in my crew because I just thought he was funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he would bring us beef. You know what I mean? I said, man, this nigga's ugly. I remember the day they said, man, we're going to put Pookie in the crew because his mom wanted managers. I said, who, this dude? Fuck no! <laughs> this guy can't be in our crew. What is, what is he gonna do? You know, is he, who is he? And so I dissed him right there in front of everybody. And uh, quiet as cat, we became best friends. To this, right. Just right. seen him the other day. Shout out to you, Pooh. I seen him riding his bike. He's a fucking uh, brilliant guy doing good things in okay. the city. So. In the studio is where I drop funk. I'm deep into the groove. It's headed for your trunk. I punk off whack MCs to breathe out of place and think that they can jump into my face with a taste of their flavor. Checking their behaviors, expecting it's hectic. How I rip and rock the mic and wreck it daily. Can I get you crazy? Yeah. I freak your soul and rip a rhyme and have drop a diamond dash back to the T Town streets with some brand new C Town beats. I don't compete with your moves and choose the flow. I like to go for what I know and blow up the whole show. Whoa, Jack Incorporated. I'm in the house for the rest of my life cause I made it fly Flyer than you thought I would come Cause niggas tried to keep a man down Now they sprung up the way I crack the funky groove I got to move like a D cause B and G is what I do for you But that don't get me Nathan, I keeps on blazing the chemo and hanging with Buffy. D Robin T on a mission for the bomb OZ, going for the 340. I know the police is on Jack, they wanna lock a black man down. And now I found that they don't love me anyway, so they plan on shoving me in the cell any day. So I spray a crowd of black niggas for some dumbass shit. I'm about to grab the mic and run that bitch, just like I get to be sick on purpose. It's the bomb, I got you fools nervous of the crime. Plus we serving the zombie ass but I got you stuck and what the fuck I have to plug A buster ass punk for front Saying something that I don't like So I blast on his don't like It's so right, it's so wrong, it's so strong I'm caught by my own song Town Street, T Love, come and wreck this beat. I'm moving Cadillacs daily, up and down the streets of 23rd by the bird. Now, who bought to pay me? Hopping out my machine and proceeding to chopping them up, negotiating my wage and back in the cut. The harder the brick, the smarter it gets. Missionary tactical teams, niggas call me Sergeant and shit. Boulevards a bitch, but so. South End's been schizo. Back from the get go, when did no. Nobody gives a fuck about me. Now, me gon' regulate these wannabe MCs. While these motherfuckers steady leaking. Styles that I be freaking, got them tweaking like Puerto Ricans on the weekend and speaking. I'm motivating lyrical flows. I'm coming with more drama for dollars and spiritual shows. I'm spitting the hoes as simple as a robbery. Escaping the play of hating like Gary Payton. I be robbing it.